welcome to episode four. And in this uh, segment, we are going to screw on all the plywood uh, for this stand. And one thing that you're going to see in this video is also the fact that we've had to offset the top. And the reason for this is because when the tank sits on top, the pre-drilled reef uh, tank outlets will end up hitting our two inch steel. So what we're doing is we are moving it forward one inch off the top and adding additional steel. Um, everything I, I do, I tend to over engineer it, uh, but I, you know, people usually don't look at stuff and say, wow, they, they over engineered that and that'd be a bad thing. So uh, I just usually add what I think I'm comfortable with. And, and so we're gonna add additional piece of steel here and then we're gonna trim out the top. Some of the tools that I'm using is uh, the uh, cordless drill here and also a impact. And I highly recommend if you have never experienced working with a impact before, um, definitely you know look into getting one for yourself because it is a great tool to use. Also we'll be using the square and uh, pencil and uh, the idea is that when we drill these holes, uh, we're gonna countersink them using a half inch countersink and use an assortment of different uh, screws here. Um, different screws because of different uh, places that we'll be uh, uh, screwing in the wood, sometimes we'll be screwing in the metals, different, different lengths. I know this is quite an assortment here, but uh, kind of necessary to have the right hardware, so definitely taking into account for that. And then just your normal drill bits. We'll be pre-drilling everything. Um, you can use self-tappers, but being that we're going to drill first and then countersink, um, it's just going to give us a better finish all the way around. And we're going to space these as evenly around as possible. And we're going to start by putting one in each corner because we know for sure that uh, we want one in each corner. And then we'll space uh, everything to look uniform from there. This really doesn't have any structural um, integrity to it, though remember that we are going to be putting a uh, sump down here. Um, I have located a 55 gallon acrylic sump to put down here so we do want to make sure that this wood is not going to want to uh, bow in the middle and by securing it around the perimeter as best as possible we'll keep that from happening. Uh, we have two supports. We have one right there and one right in the middle here and that's going to be our biggest help to carry the weight as this 55 gallon uh, sump is going to take up uh, pretty much everywhere from here to about right there and leave just enough room for our electronics to go in. Okay, so we've done a couple of the uh, screws here and just wanted to let you know uh, I did have some difficulty with the number eight metal screws. So ended up switching over to the number 10 screws with the quarter inch uh, heads on them and uh, these are a little more sturdier. They are self-tappers, self-drilling screws. So this is what I recommend. It's the uh, number 10, one and a half hex head. And then what you're going to want to do to make them flush is because of the because of the head that they have on them. You don't want to just push the the wood down as you tighten them up to make them nice and flush and not going to catch anything. Is uh, just take your um, I think this is half inch bit. Let's see here. Yep, half inch bit, and uh, take it up to like the uh, beginning of the hole. So as you uh, drill down here, just uh, keep going until you get down to the hole. Um, so just a little helpful hint there. Uh, we will be using the counter sink later. All right, I wanted to show you one other thing that I'm doing. Just to, once again, make things easier on you as I go along here. Uh, if you get at Home Depot these six inch squares, which is really good for uh, gluing acrylic together anyways, um, you can basically line up the end of the square with the end of the board and then mark your hole here with your pencil uh, to drill and uh, this will make things go a lot easier. You'll be able to get your holes spaced evenly every time uh, from the edge. So just make things look better. You don't have to break out the tape measure every time. 
All right, just another lesson learned here. Um, don't want to drill in the welds. Pretty thick. Uh, you have to have some pretty good drill bits to uh, go through them. So uh, on the corners, I'm just going to basically uh, anywhere there's a weld. Because these welds in the corners are mitered, uh, where I was drilling is exactly right in the middle of the weld, uh, which doesn't compromise the weld necessarily, uh, but it's just the metal is so much thicker there that uh, it's just better just to go ahead and, and offset the uh, hole. So keep that in mind when you drill your corners on the top here. Okay, so here's the wood all installed, and I've trimmed it out with a little bit of aluminum around the side and just to basically give you a, a little close-up of what I was talking about we put a, a piece of angle iron underneath here one inch and I overhung the board one inch and then this aluminum trim actually wraps around the bottom and gets screwed up through the one inch angle iron so basically two pieces of angle back to back and then that comes up and trims out the front of the plywood so that protects the, the corner of the plywood so it doesn't chip away. And then this is a flat piece of aluminum one inch that goes on the side. You can't use angle iron because there is no space underneath. It's flush. Um, so the reason why this was done was because after calling Aquian, I figured out that the holes for the Reef Ready tank were going to basically be right up against the 2 inch steel. So this gives us a 1 inch gap between the support bars and the sump holes and return holes that's going to be in this Reef Ready tank. So just to kind of show you some more of the details. So those are number 10 metal screws, or number 8, inch and a half. And basically they have a, a socket bit on the top. I used a half inch wood auger bit to recess them into the wood so that they would not interfere. And did the same thing down here, making sure to, to put the two screws there. So I'm just going to pan left to right. Obviously we have aluminum trim all the way around down here also. So just to uh, pan around. Pretty much these socket heads were the only thing that I could find that it would actually drive really nicely into the metal. And after drilling a hole and these uh, metal screws that I use are self tappers. So that's what I ended up going with. And then this is our board across the back. One other thing I did, since I had a couple little small pieces of scrap, I cut them to the right length. So once again, I used 100% of this uh, ply, birch plywood, every bit of the 4x8 sheet. So what I did is I doubled it up and ran wood screws. I don't know if you can see that or not. Ran wood screws through the front and then also in the back and offset the, the screws, of course, so they wouldn't interfere with each other. But what this does is because there is not a bar that runs across here, I didn't want the wood to warp over time. And by doubling it up this way, it'd keep it rigid and it'd be less likely to warp. So the next, next uh, episode, what we'll be doing is installing the refugium light underneath and also some reflective material that I'm going to show you. And then we'll be installing this core board, this white sign core board, to give some extra salt spray protection on the backside.